We love combustion engines. There's just something about them that electrons and circuits can't match. However, we're not delusional, mostly. We know that we can't just burn dinosaur juice forever. But we may be able to hold onto them with just a few tweaks, namely the fuel. Ford has patented a new turbocharged hydrogen-powered engine. It's an interesting idea. Surely hydrogen isn't a straight swap for petrol. Will this actually work? The most common type of hydrogen-powered cars uses a fuel cell. You know, like the one James May has. But we don't like these as much as they are essentially EVs, but with an onboard power source. No noise, no climbing through the revs, and definitely no shifting gears. Pretty dull, if you ask me. Compressed hydrogen gas is fed into a fuel cell which converts it into electrical energy rather than burning it. The process isn't as complicated as you may think. That fuel cell works in a similar way to the battery you'd find in your car. Hydrogen will enter an electrode where it makes contact with the catalyst which separates the atoms into a proton and electron. Those electrons can then generate a positive charge to power the motors. Don't worry, the science lesson is over now. But the secret to this system is what comes out of the exhaust pipe. Well really, it's about what doesn't. The only byproduct of that process is water vapor. So it's about as green as it gets. Also, even though the car is electric, it means fill up times are considerably quicker because you don't need to charge up. You just need to fill up with hydrogen and away you go. It's pressurized into a liquid. So the pumps are a bit scary looking, but we'll get over that. It's also just as quick as filling up with normal fuels. There are only a handful of production cars using hydrogen fuel cells because it's expensive and the infrastructure just isn't there for more widespread use. As an example, this is a Hyundai Nexo. It's an SUV which uses hydrogen fuel technology. So any guesses as to how much it costs? The Nexo will set you back 66 thousand pounds before you've even ticked off an optional extras box. Even though it's a much greener option, that's worryingly close to luxury SUV money. That's the same price you'd pay for a top of the range Porsche Macan and more than you'll pay for an all electric Audi e-tron. It might be impressive technology, but it's still a lot of money for a Hyundai. So hydrogen fuel cells are really good for the environment, but because they only power electric motors, the cars will be just as silent as your regular electric car. And to be honest, that's not what we're after. So where does Ford's patent differ from a hydrogen fuel cell? Well, it's an entirely different thing altogether. The patent describes an option that will keep the good noises that we want to hear from an engine and make it more green. It will use hydrogen as a direct replacement for petrol. Ford has been one of the leading car manufacturers when it comes to switching their range to electric. I mean, they'll even sell you an all-electric SUV Mustang, if you can call that thing a Mustang. But they're not ready to give up entirely on old combustion engines. Patent reveals plans for a turbocharged combustion engine, which uses hydrogen as its fuel source. It doesn't say exactly, but could this be an option for cars like the Mustang, in order to save it from being completely electrified? The idea sounds great. It's a combustion engine that will sound and feel like the ones we're familiar with today. That will mean there could still be the option of a normal manual gearbox and not some fake simulated gearbox that we see in some electric cars. So how does it actually work? The best thing is that it would be very similar to what we're used to now. Pressurized hydrogen is injected into the combustion chamber and burnt off in the same way as if you were using regular fuel. It's cleaner than fossil fuels with water still being the main thing that comes out of the tailpipe. It's green, it keeps cars fun and there's no waiting around for hours to charge up your car. Imagine you could have a little water cooler tap in your car or something. I don't know, Ford, give me a call. So why aren't we immediately switching to this great idea? Surely it's the answer. The rapid advancement in EV tech means that the majority of manufacturers just aren't focusing on hydrogen technology right now but this hasn't stopped them trying it out. Almost 10 years ago, Aston Martin took a hydrogen powered V12 Rapid to the Nürburgring 24 hours and it actually finished. Also, Toyota and Yamaha recently announced they'd be collaborating to develop a five liter, 449 brake horsepower V8 that runs on hydrogen. However, if you do a little bit of digging, you'll find that the production process of hydrogen needs some serious scaling to make it both cheaper and more efficient. Because if you zoom out from just looking at the car's global footprint, ugh, 
I hate that phrase. You'll see that there's some energy that needs to go in to actually produce the hydrogen. So you kind of need fossil fuels for that. Yes, the emissions out of the tailpipe will be drastically improved, but the whole process of making the stuff isn't completely green just yet. Now, of course, there's an argument that solar power is the answer to making it more efficient. But why wouldn't you just turn that straight into electricity to fill up an EV's battery rather than making another fuel? We're essentially using hydrogen as a way of storing energy and is that more or less efficient than storing it in batteries? And then you've got the cost of the thing. Yes, it might be better for the environment, but what's the point if no one can afford to fill up? At the moment, hydrogen still costs more per mile than petrol. Even if you disregard the cost, you still need a place to fill up. Hydrogen fuel pumps are few and far between, and this is something that even EVs are well ahead with. Charging points are popping up everywhere nowadays, and of course you can even charge up overnight at home. Hydrogen is also quite flammable. If you didn't know what the H in H-bomb stood for, well, you do now. Both fuel cell and combustion cars have to store hydrogen in really strong tanks in order to make them crash resistant. That makes the cars heavier and makes the hydrogen harder to transport compared to petrol. Most petrol tanks in modern cars are made out of plastic, but that's not something you could get away with when storing hydrogen. It's a weird situation. Hydrogen combustion cars do kind of make sense, but they somehow also make no sense at all. They'll only catch on if hydrogen fuel cars become popular enough that the infrastructure drastically improves. So if everyone else could go out and buy fuel cell cars so that we can keep our big noisy combustion engines a little longer, that would be great. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, then you should check out this one on Audi's new diesel engine, which runs on vegetable oil. Cheers, and I'll see you next time.